Hello everybody, welcome uh, to our next uh, Founders Battle Talk. Um, today we have with us uh, the, the SEO experts. So we have uh, Michael Schwarz with us, um, who is actually the co-founder of Improve. And then we have also Radu Cioplia with us, and he's uh, also a senior expert in the field of SEO. Um, and today they will talk about how to make your company visible within uh, Google. And it's very exciting to have uh, them with us because they have uh, also in-depth experience uh, how Google actually works because they have been working with Google. So I always I think this is, uh, this is uh, very, very interesting. So welcome to the talk. Um, they will uh, held uh, around, uh, as usual, around the 30 minutes uh, presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to, to use the um, don't hesitate to raise your questions, and I will, uh, as usually, uh, post them uh, to the uh, speaker. Um, but as usually, you can also raise your hand, and so you have the chance to directly talk uh, to the presenter. Um, so, Michael and Radu, welcome to the talk. The floor is yours. Uh, thanks for the introduction, and thanks again for having us. Uh, it's exciting to talk to you guys about how you can use your website uh, to uh, gain additional traffic and how this traffic can come from Google. Um, yeah, so absolutely, I've tried, uh, I'd like to make this session as interactive as possible, and um, that means really ask your questions, and I don't want to, you know, talk a lot, of, a lot of theoretical stuff, but really make it as practical as possible. Still, to kickstart the discussion, a couple of slides. I'm not sure, not sure if the technical um, Things here support this, but if you have questions, you can even you know while I'm while I'm presenting, uh, raise your questions and I will try to answer them directly. Um, yeah, and with me is uh, Radu Chioplea, and he's uh, like a senior SEO expert on my team, uh, working on all the different difficult cases all around the world, and that's what we pre uh, pretty much do. So we're basically an SEO company fo um, founded by former Googlers who do well help companies all around the world to do better on SEO. And these are some of our clients. And as you can see, there's like some startups. Uh, Airbnb is one of the startups that we've been working with uh, from the very beginning when they were still a garage company in San Francisco. But then there's also like Austrian startups like Miam, and of course bigger companies like Procter & Gamble or Red Bull. Having said that, um, that's all about us. Let's get started with SEO. And uh, like one number that I always like to start with because I find it still after all these years of uh, of doing search um, very impressive is that seven out of ten visitors to an average website come through search engines. So you know there's plenty of ways to do things online and everyone is talking about Facebook, about Twitter and about Pinterest and what have you. But in the end of the day, uh, if you add up the numbers, it's still 70% of visitors that uh, go through an average website uh, through Google, uh, through search engines. and Really, in most countries, we are talking Google with a market share of 96% in the German-speaking markets and most other European markets. Exceptions are just Russia and China and well, and and, and, and South Korea, but that's pretty much it. Um, I do understand that most of you guys are starting a business, and I think of every business, whatever you do, if it's an online business or an offline business, the website is an essential part. And we want, and we also see with a lot of our clients that our approaches after they've already launched their website that a lot of things go wrong and or they spend too much money uh, for too little results. Uh, and well, I guess the aim of this session is to avoid that. Uh, so uh, what uh, I want to walk you through 10 things that you sh must be doing, it's really a must criteria in order to make your website successful. It's nothing like major. And I do understand, uh, again, that it's a startup and you have to be, you know, very invest your money wisely. So let's make sure that uh, we all, uh, focus like on the 20% like the of things that bring you 80% of the income. And uh, so some of the things for for, an S for, for uh, those of you uh, who are familiar with SEO, so I'm familiar, uh, uh, but for others, probably it's a good reminder. Anyways, uh, and the first thing you need to uh, keep in mind is like three terms. It's H1, URLs, and title text. Uh, these are your three main items that you need to work on for placing your keyword. And I will talk a little bit about what it exactly means and make it a little bit more feasible. 
So the title tag, if you have your web browser, and that's like a screenshot of uh, um, a Chrome, and you see like uh, on the I'll point my mouse over here. Um, I hope you guys can see that. Yep. Um, the where it says iPhone 5 bestellen ordering iPhone 5, that's the title tag in your website. So something, it's, it's actually it's not very visible in, uh, in a web browser, it's just the top bar, but for search engines it's super important. It's the blue line that Google displays in, in an average Google search result page, um, and on top of all that it's also a major ranking factor. So uh, by putting your keyword into that um, blue line into those, into those title tags, you're, you're already making sure that, uh, for, that, it, that you, you'll be found. And you would be surprised how many pages do not follow this rule. So if you surf around a little bit like the internet, you'll see a lot of pages who do not follow the basic rule of putting um, you know, the simple keyword into their title tag. So one super important rule must do things. The second one is the meta descriptions. And, and again, we're looking here at the Google search result page. The meta description is just um, underneath all. Uh, the, um, the blue blue line is the black line here, right? It, it, where it says the, the Samsung Galaxy S3 and so on and so forth. Um, this part is not relevant for uh, ranking. So whatever you put there won't change whether, whether or not you're in composition 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, or, or, or whatsoever but it does define whether or not people click on your result. Uh, and we've been playing around with that, obviously, with a lot of our clients and testing and, uh, to, to see which one works best. And uh, for Red Bull, for example, we recently uh, were crunching some numbers and we've seen that for some of our results, we have like uh, click-throughs, people with like 100% of people that search for something click on our result. So there's, we call it a uh, click-through rate. And, and, and uh, we achieved like 100% CTR on some of our keywords. And even in average, we had 50% CTR. Um, and that's, of course, due in part uh, to the description that you give on, uh, underneath. The more relevant you make it, the more in, um, engaging you make it, the more likely it is that people click on it. So if you have like just, you know, an English description for German sites, mm, that's probably not going to work as well. If you, ha um, if you, as in this example, I managed to bold some of the characters, like Samsung Galaxy S3 in this case, you'll probably have a, a more higher uh, click through rate. And in the end, that's what you care about. So um, spending some extra time on thinking how many, what you want to put there, um, and phrasing that nicely definitely pays off. Um, moving on to the, well, now you see it a little bit bigger. Moving on to the third rank vector is H1, and here we already uh, are directly on the website and we look at the content. And the H1 is basically the main title of your, uh, of your uh, website. Again, you need to make sure that it features your keyword. Uh, uh, again, you would be surprised how many people or how many websites miss out on this one. An important ranking factor, and you need to make sure that, 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 that you uh, yeah, do it. It's basically like the headline of a newspaper, right? So um, imagine you look at the New York Times without a, without a proper headline. Probably be hard to figure out what the article is about. The same is for Google. If you look at the website, they need to they look at the headline first. If there's no headline, they'll have a hard time um, ranking your keyword, your, your, your website for the desired keyword. So again, H1, important one here. Um, and the last one, it's kind of an obvious one, is, is the URL. And um, we have highlighted it here in, the, in, in, in this example from Red Bull. Uh, so we have like energy drink, obviously is a very important keyword for Red Bull, so we put it like it's a subdomain, uh, which is like even like in the very beginning of the, of the URL. Then there's redbull.com, well that's a domain name obviously, and then there's caffeine. Caffeine is an, is, uh, an important keyword for them, so we, put, we made sure that the, the keyword appears in the URL. Um, and again, that's pretty much the same uh, methodology that, that you should follow if you create a website that's supposed to do well on Google. Make sure your keyword appears also in the URL. To summarize that, so we had like three items. We had the, the title tag, the blue line, the URL, and the meta, meta descriptions, and the H1. Uh, well, that's actually four, right? So four things that you, that you need to keep in mind for optimizing your, your website from a keyword perspective. 
if you do that, you're already on a, a pretty good path towards a, a good ranking. Um, now moving on, and let's make it a little bit, uh, a notch more difficult, um, essentially. And uh, at this part, we're talking about landing pages, right? So um, if you followed all the rules before, you could say, well, let's only have one page, and I put all my keywords there. So you have like, I don't know, domain.com, and, and on the home page, you put all your keywords. Um, and again, that's not a good idea because Google likes to have one page, or one keyword for one page. So if you want to rank for more than one keyword, you need to have more pages, right? Um, let me explain that to you with an example. So we've been working for this um, well, medium-sized company called Hebe Technik, and what they essentially uh, uh, had, they had a, a home page with a couple of pages, but not very, nothing very extensive. Uh, and uh, all the detailed information about the products they had in the PDF. PDFs are not very good to understand for Google. It's one large document, it's not very user friendly and also Google doesn't like it very much. Uh, so what we did with these guys is we created for all of their keywords a separate landing page. So instead of having one large PDF with a lot of uh, words and, and, and articles in it, we had like a, a lot of different uh, HTML uh, web pages um, and we had the opportunity to rank for each of those. So um, in a nutshell, the more pages you have, the better it is in, in the end of the day because the, for, uh, for the more keywords you can be found in Google, for the more keywords that you're found in Google, the more traffic you can get. I think it's a pretty easy equation. Um, and well, that's a bad practice example. That's from a Spanish uh, microcredit page. Um, and you know, they do opti they optimize for uh, too many keywords at, at, at one page, right? So they do rank for microcredits, or so urgent microcredits, micro uh, but they do not rank for all the keywords that are um, cited over here because they, they should actually be on a, on, a, on a dedicated landing page on all squeezed into one. Um, yeah. Rado, right now you're turning, turning to technical. First of all, hello everybody. So I'm going to present the next few slides, uh, which are basically uh, going into more uh, technical SEO point of view. So it's uh, connected with actually within the actual development of, uh, of the website uh, that's behind the uh, So the next point is number six. It's optimizing out and title images. Uh, and uh, again, this one is uh, is important not only because this uh, will Radu. help you. Uh, yeah. Could could you maybe um, speak a bit louder or more into the microphone? We hear you very silently yeah. at the moment. Perfect. We have, we have a, a common microphone and probably that's the issue. I will try to, to close up. Okay, so I will just uh, uh, resume a little what I just said before. So the next point, number six, it's optimizing out and title images tags. Uh, this one, again, is a more technical uh, SEO approach. And this will help uh, both the rankings, like normal rankings in, in search, but also having, if the business is, uh, is focusing on images, it will also help ranking in uh, direct in Google Images that also translates in, uh, in, in traffic. Uh, as you can see this, uh, as you can see with this slide, uh, basically, there is uh, there are a few codes that you can add uh, for each images, and providing information on what those images are about, uh, in order for Google to understand exactly what those images are about and ranking accordingly. Uh, again, both in Google Images and uh, in, uh, in in search. Uh, in order for uh, in, in order to do that, uh, you will basically need to have this uh, new point number seven. Uh, a good CMS that will allow you to perform all those changes and also in the, after you launch the website to basically maintain the website and be able to change all those SEO related terms again like uh, SEO titles like Michael uh, presented before, the URLs, the meta descriptions and uh, also the, the alt text for the images and everything that we've talked uh, so, so far. In order to, to do that uh, you are at this stage, uh, able to choose from a lot of CMS options out there. They're basically all free and really, really easy to, to use. We 
version is here just a screenshot from, uh, from CMS uh, from WordPress, uh, which is again, even if you're not familiar with it, it only takes a few hours to get used to it and then and start working with it. And with, uh, for example, with, uh, with WordPress, you are able to provide all the SEO assets uh, uh, at the point and click of a mouse. You don't need any technical knowledge or SEO knowledge in order to, to use it. Uh, it's, it's really simple and, and easy to use. So that's a recommendation from our side. Um, yeah, the, uh, WordPress really already features 80% of uh, what you need from a technical perspective. And uh, well, we don't get any you know, money from WordPress for saying this, but it really, I mean, from our experience, it's the, it's the best choice to do. It's one of the better choices that you can make. I would, however, refrain for, from using like a self-developed CMS or something like this, because that will very soon get very expensive for you if you want to SEO optimize uh, a page. And also all the CMS available, not only WordPress, but the ones that are well known and that you can easily find online, uh, will also help you provide all the content in a friendly way, not only for Google, but also for the users. For example, if you have this, uh, this example in front of you for this slide, uh, the page on the, on, on the left side, it provides the content, it provides the content uh, hidden to Google, for, for example, so for you to think it's okay, but for Google, uh, it's not really good. really important uh, for, uh, only for Google in order to understand your website and the structure of the website and what type of the pages and, and, uh, and keyword you're, you're using in order to, to, to rank well. Exactly, so I mean uh, this is uh, again a reason why we are recommending like, uh, uh, like uh, established systems such as WordPress because they uh, make it really easy to use sitemaps um, I'm, unless you, you want me want us to, we're not going to spend hours talking about sitemaps now, but we do recommend reading this article. So if you search for uh, sitemaps in Google Web, Webmaster Central blog on Google, you will come across this article and it will tell you exactly what you need to do. Or, and it's, it's really not rocket science. Um, all right, moving on to some um, additional uh, features. So that's what, what you've seen until now is must-haves. So everything uh, up to uh, point number eight is things that you must do. This is like state-of-the-art SEO. And, um, and if you want to compete, this is definitely, um, uh, as I said, a must-have. Now some nice-to-haves. Uh, and one of them is like rich snippets. Uh, so usually, um, and I've seen, I'm going back a couple of slides. Uh, Google search results look something like this, right? You have blue, green, and, uh, and, and black. Uh, however, Google, since a couple of, um, since a while, allows us to add additional stuff. Most importantly, the star ratings. Uh, and of course, this doesn't apply for everything, but if you um, have like some, serv uh, some type of service that users can rate, uh, then uh, Google will allow you to add those star ratings into the search results. Why is it important? Because the CTR goes up. CTR again is the click-through rate. Um, the, the star ratings make sure that more, more users go from Google search results to your, um, to your website, to make your website more visible. Um, the, this applies for, as I said, the reviews, also for recipe sites, event sites, or even music sites. So every type of, or any type of listing that you have. We did that, for example, for Volkswagen. So if you search on uh, Google AP for uh, VW Passat, yeah, then uh, somewhere in the top 10, uh, Welt Auto Ranking will come up, and you will already have like a couple of uh, Passat cars that are currently up for sales. 
cells uh, directly in the search results. Why do we like it? Because it uh, occupies more space in the in the search results for you and less for your competitors. Um, this is not uh, again not a very advanced in terms of technical implementation, and again a lot of uh, CMS systems such as WordPress do support that already. Out of the box. Um, well, and now finally in the number ten, which is link building. Um, and we could probably spend like a couple of hours talking about this topic alone. Um, and uh, well, in a nutshell, it, in the, the way Google was built and what made Google different from Alta Vista and Yahoo and whatever you had in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, what, they, what, what made Google different is that they started, started counting links. So the more the links that you had to your website, the more important your website was. Um, and well, that, that, that the same rule pretty much applies. So the more links that you get from other websites, the, the, the more important your website will be. Um, of course, there are some catches. One of them is the, the other website that links to you also needs to be a good one. So um, if I run a little blog uh, and link to your website, uh, that will certainly count less than if I was CNN and CNN would put a link to you. That's a no-brainer. Uh, and uh, this is measured in terms of um, uh, page rank. And this, uh, if you're interested, um, well, just search for that. Uh, there is a page rank toolbar, so search on Google for a page rank toolbar. In, uh, install that in your Chrome uh, browser. And it, this will pretty much give you a, a high-level idea uh, how important a website is. So if a website has a page rank of 10, which is the highest one, that counts a lot. If it has a page rank of one, that doesn't count a lot. Um, ten is also, I have to say, that Facebook and I think Google itself, and that's about it. So, and uh, like uh, average Austrian, huge or like huge Austrian websites like ORF, AT, I think they have a page rank of six. So you can imagine if you can get a link from anywhere between a page rank three to a page rank six site, well, you're pretty well off. Uh, I wouldn't go for patron zero, patron one um, uh, sites, generally speaking, because very often these, these websites have only been built to manipulate Google. And, um, well, to make a long story short, uh, we've seen up like 40% of the success of our online marketing strategy. Uh, and that's also based on what, I, uh, what, what we basically defined when I was still working in Google. Links were a pretty part, a big part of our algorithm, and still is. So a lot of people, like probably you and and and, and, and us, we tried uh, uh, try to manipulate Google by placing fake links, buying links, or exchanging links, and this is certainly that Google uh, doesn't like at all. And uh, here uh, penalties come into play. So Google, if if you know a site does too much link building and buys too many links or links that are really not good at all then Google will ban the website from their search result pages. Um, and this happens to thousands or hundreds of thousands of small businesses every day, uh, but even to big businesses. And here's an example of BMW, Forbes, HP, or AT&T. Um, that's all examples that I know for sure because I penalized them back in the days. And this, this is still going on as we speak right now. So it's like a little bit of a divided message. So at the one point, I do recommend you to do link building um, and to get like links that are you know legitimate links that are so basically links that uh, would also send traffic at the same time uh, if an SEO agency or I don't know any guy out there uh, approaches you and tells you go buy links for the purpose of SEO I would be very um, hesitant to do that um, yeah and what happens if you do it uh, well wrong and uh, this is also like a bad example uh, of a website that did buy a little bit too, too many links. They had like 100,000 visitors a day. It's a software house business. It was a software house business, but they bought a lot of links. Uh, Google penalized them, and you saw what happened to their traffic. It really went south. And eventually, they had to, they had to close their business um, because of the lack of Google traffic and because they got a penalty. Might be not their mistake, but might be the mistake of their SEO agency that they employed at the time, but still, the result is the same. 
So what I'm telling you is, um, bottom line again, you don't need to be scared here. Uh, it's um, uh, as long as you play by the rules and don't do anything that goes against your gut feeling, you'll probably be fine. Uh, but if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. With that, uh, that's a really brief overview about SEO. And from here, I would actually like to take your questions and answer your concrete issues, problems, questions, whatever you have. And we've been right in time, 30 minutes after 6. six. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing uh, the 10 basic uh, rules with us.